So Anthony asks, what is the best stud to breed with this girl, whose DNA is this, for dollars breeding program? So that's a multi-part question. So I'm gonna try and answer it in its entirety. Um, I haven't done a blackboard thing for a while or whiteboard, so I thought I'd just make this a whiteboard one so I can really kind of talk about what's going on here. So, you know, when you, and look, great question. Um, so the first thing that I do when I'm talking to somebody about choosing a stud dog is to find out what their goals are because they can vary and the outcome might vary. I'll give you an example. This dog here has a lot of opportunities in its DNA and we're going to go through this in detail here in a moment. Some of those things you might not realize in what's called the phenotype, the physical attributes of the puppy that you're producing. They might be in the genotype hidden within the dog that puppy can then go on in the future to make other colors that this dog maybe couldn't make. Why is that important? Because you're then paying for extra DNA that is only useful to a person who's going to breed that puppy. So I want to be clear about that because, you know, we can get in some really expensive dogs that wouldn't make the dog look any different than a less expensive dog other than the fact that it's in its genotype and those puppies could then go on to do special things. So does it make sense to pay for that? Maybe, especially if you're gonna keep a puppy, absolutely. Um, if you're selling a puppy that's strictly gonna be for pets and you're not gonna give breeding rights, it doesn't make any sense at all because the dog's not likely to be bred and consequently hidden colors would not benefit anybody. So to go spend two, three times as much on a stud fee to generate hidden, hidden colors that will never be realized, it would be um, not very sensible. So, um, and the other thing is when I talk to my customers about this, we talk specifically about what I think the value of the litter is gonna be, so that somebody can get a clear idea about why they may or may not wanna spend more money on a stud. So, um, and we'll talk more about our stud service at the end of this, but this is not a video that's trying to promote us, but of course, any opportunity I can to do that, I'm gonna take it, all right. So let's talk about Anthony's dog. So what is Anthony's dog? Well, it's a Frenchie. And he gave me the complete DNA, which is great. So let's talk about what this dog is, and then we're gonna talk about what you might breed it against. So this is a blue carrier dog. It's not blue, but it carries the gene for blue, which is the little d. It does have two copies of little co, Coco. So this is a chocolate dog. It carries one copy of what we call a uh, there's two different versions of chocolate. There's what we used to call untestable and testable. So it carries one copy of testable. Some people want to call that Roho, but it's basically a different form of chocolate. And they are, they're separate from each other. These don't mix together. You can have a dog that has both copies, has two copies of both versions of chocolate, and that would be then be called a new shade. So, but this dog has one copy, it has two copies of, of cocoa. So it is a chocolate dog, which means by the way, it will have a red eye glow in a dark room. Has one copy of testable chocolate, which would not produce a red eye glow, but it's already got it. It's ATA carries two copies, it carries tan points. This is two, there's two things that make tan points. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. It has one copy of black moss, which is the EM, and one copy of cream. KYKY doesn't carry brindle, NN doesn't carry pine, little, N, little IN, little IN carries one copy of, carries two copies of um, intensity. All right, so look, there's some other things you don't know about this dog. How big is the dog? How old is the dog? Is the dog coming into heat? Has the dog already had a heat cycle? You know, we don't know any of those, those so we can't answer those. But a very, very interesting uh, question would be how big is the dog? Is there anything about this dog? that you want to fix? Does it have a long back? Does it have the ears that are too big? Does it have a long snout? Is it a bit leggy? Um, you know, does it have a small head? Does it have too much tail? Those are all questions that I would be asking you because color, DNA is what we're talking about here. Of course, it's important, but structure, super important. Um, and, and you know, it's much easier, by the way, to get color into a dog. Structure is a harder thing. So if you've got some structural defects on a dog, then it definitely makes sense to think about the structure of the side that you're gonna use. You know, I like smaller dogs that don't have big ears, that don't have much muzzle, that don't have much tail, that have shorter legs. You know, that's, you know, they're in that for, 
a fully grown dog to be in this 18 to 22 pound range to me that's what i like to see in a frenchie but that's not everybody's cup of tea and uh uh you know if you get much smaller than that it might be hard to breed them that might not be intense so that might be fine um if they get a lot bigger 27 or 27 pounds is the breed standard so anything above that's not supposed to be in the ring but certainly there's frenchies out there that are 30 35 and 40 pounds again not my cup of tea but you know if you've got a dog that is a bigger dog definitely breed it to a smaller dog if it's got a dog with got big ears and you want smaller ears breed it to a dog with smaller ears and you will get some of those attributes being handed over uh, to some of the puppies so you're not going to fix the whole entire litter you know you've got a dog that's got you know long legged long back long tailed big nose <laughs> whacking great big eared dog don't expect to get lots of really small compact dogs because it's probably not going to happen but it could but your best shot at getting that would be to breed to a dog that uh, has the attributes that you want. All right, so we're not going to talk any more about structure because that wasn't part of this question. So the question is, what would I, well, really the question was, what would I breed this dog to? And I'm going to base it on two criteria. What I think is the best thing to get the best DNA out of the dog? And then what would be the best thing to get the most dollars out of that dog? So not quite the same but we'll, we'll work on it all right so look this is a chocolate dog and um breed to another chocolate dog and you get all chocolates so that would be my first criteria i would breed to a dog that had two copies of chocolate and i'm going to skip forward here to the uh the the, the non-brindle this is you know you, you call that a fawn dog in fact what is this dog the answer is this is a chocolate fawn is what this dog is that makes fawn, that makes chocolate, it's a chocolate fawn. There's no brindle present. You've got tan points, we want to work on the tan points. Absolutely, keep away from the brindle. You hear me talk about this and here's an example why. Get rid of the brindle, you won't get any brindle dogs. So KYKY, non-brindle dogs. So we've got that written down in stone. So now what do we do after this? Well, this is the, well let's go, let's go to this, the blue jean. What would we do with the blue jean? I would breed to a dog that's little dear, little dear, blue dog. And because then you, half your litter is going to be chocolates that carry blue. And we'll talk about exactly how it's going to work out. Half of them are going to be lilacs. That's a good day for you. This one here, um, I would be working on testable chocolate. So I would again like a dog that's little b, little b. It's going to cost you more money because that's getting to be an expensive dog now. But now you've got dogs that are going to, when these two coincide, you will get new shades. Um, so that would be a good, 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 good. On this side here for the tan points, you could got two choices. You can go with AT-AT or you could go with ATA. And either one of those will produce tan pointed dogs. We'll get into that more here in a little bit. Um, the, the, the cream, I, I don't get too worried about the black mask. I, I honestly don't have a lot of people who buy or don't buy dogs based on black masks. So I wouldn't get too worried about that. So what do you want to do with the cream? Well, um, if you bred to a dog that's little e, little e, then you will get half the dogs that'll be creams and you can get some platinums out of this too. So yeah, that, that, that's a question mark there. That's, that, that's the one that uh, um, maybe. Uh, NN is pied. Do you like pied dogs? Um, well, guess what? If you've got NN, you're not getting any pieds. If you put them with a pied dog, they'll all be NSs, pied carriers. You have to have two copies, all of this stuff on here. You basically have to have two copies for it to be showing, except for the brindle gene. All right, so I don't think this matters. This is, this is to me, doesn't matter because you can absolutely can control that in both the puppies. You're not gonna get any pied dogs, you could get pied carriers. I, wouldn't, I would not make that something that was a, um, particularly important for me. Uh, the intensity gene, if you get a dog that's got two copies of intensity, you make for lighter tan points. Great. Again, nice to have if you like really clear white tan points, then a dog that's two copies of intensity um, along with uh, tan points will show up really nicely. If that dog ends up being an EE, a cream dog, you won't show the tan points at all. Everything will be hidden if it's an EE dog. So that's why I put a question mark there. So we didn't talk about moral. This dog does not have moral. And so the question is, should you breed back to a dog that has one copy of Merle? And the answer to that is, is that is something 
like brindled where it takes a single copy for it to show up if you like brindle dogs i would definitely be considering that and i hope i'm not running off the screen here i'm just going to look and make sure i'm not going to go off the screen make sure that you can see what i'm saying i'm going to move the screen just a little bit there we go a bit more there we go move the screen a little tab and then the last thing would be um we didn't say anything about um fluffy so we're assuming that this dog is LL, not a fluffy. But you could breed to a dog that is little L, little L, and you get fluffy carriers. And you've just upped your price on a sub fee, but you've upped your value of your puppies to the tune of a few thousand dollars a puppy. So this, if you like fluffies or you want to get into fluffies and you're going to keep a dog, then that's something that might be of great interest. So. So now let's look at this in, in a bit more detail. Um, all right, so what are we gonna get? This combination of a dog that's a blue carrier with a solid blue dog, you will get half blue carriers and half blues. A Coco to a Coco gets every single dog is a chocolate dog. Breeding to a, a, a Rojo or a Tesla chocolate dog Half of them are going to be carriers and half of them are going to be chocolates. Uh, either one here, we're either going to get, we're going to get 10 points across the board. It doesn't, there's different versions of 10 points. An ATA dog tends to have a more of an orange colored 10 points. ATA tends to be more lighter. Um, you could breed to an AA dog. I'm not going to worry with that here, but it would make for solid colors. But I think we should work on the tan points, and it doesn't really matter which way you go. That would, whether you chose an 80-80 dog or an 80-A dog, you're going to get tan points. Uh, certainly, if you want to get really clear tan points and you're working on this intensity gene, then 80-80 would be a preference. So on the E, you've got two choices here. Um, you can either have uh, no creams, a quarter creams, or a half cream dog. So remember, when you get a cream dog, it covers everything else up. So um, if you like cream dogs, then you, know, you can consider whether or not you should be breeding to a double E dog, or a little E, a big E dog, or a big E, big E dog. So we, we can leave this one as a question mark because we'll talk more about how that might pay in. We wanna go with a, we're gonna, definitely gonna go with a non-brindle dog, so we're gonna get a KYKY non-brindle dog. Um, the pied doesn't play into this because since this dog doesn't have any copy of pied, you're not going to get any pied puppies. So I'm just going to put a question mark here. Well, you basically, let's not do that. Let's just put something down here. You, you can get, depends on what you chose here, but you can get, you can either get pied carriers or not pied. So pied carrier would be NS and NN is a non-pied. This one here, it's not particularly relevant in this equation. Sure, intensities. I mean, I wouldn't spend a lot of money to try and get a, a two copies of intensity, but if you did do this, you'd get two copies of intensity here. So it'd be, it'd be a double intensity. On, on the moral end of it, if you went with a moral dog, then half of the litter would be morals and half the litter would not be. I like morals. They are hot dogs right now. So that to me would be something that would be of interest. And then likewise, if you chose, you've got two choices here. Don't go with a fluffy dog of any kind, or go with a full fluffy and get half fluffies and half fluffy carriers. All right, so now let's see what, we've, what do we end up with. What's the best we can end up with? The best we can end up with is a new shade platinum moral fluffy carrier. That is the best you can do with this dog. So it's a, and, and what would you expect to get? Not a lot of them, because you're only gonna get a half of them here, a half of them here, and a half of them here, and a half of them here. So the chance of getting that dog is not very great. One in 16. Only one in 16 of those dogs would be that platinum, new shade, um, merle, fluffy, uh, screwed up on the fluffy end of this. Hold on a second, one, two, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. We know they're all going to be fluffy carriers. We don't have to have that. It's one and eight. It's one and eight. Got to get the math right. It's one and eight. So one and eight of those dogs, again, not a very good chance, right? I mean, you know, if you had a big litter, yeah, you might get one in there. 
But would you get, a, you know, what's the, the chances of you, what, what you're, every dog you get is going to be a chocolate dog. Half of the dogs are going to be either lilacs or um, Isabella's, of which half of that subgroup are going to be creams, of which half of that subgroup are going to be morals, and they're all going to be fluffy carriers. So that's the dog that I would be choosing. And by the way, if you looked at my puppies, my studs, I've got one that's close to that. His name is Mando. And he's not going to do all of that. He is a blue chocolate carrier, doesn't carry testable chocolate, does have tan points, carries a copy of cream, no brindle, carries a copy of pie, carries intensity, and he's either merle and he's a fluffy. So Mando would be a super dog. I love this dog. He's not been doing this for a long time. I think he's probably got six months worth of breeding underneath him now. He's producing really beautiful dogs. I love him. So if you want to go to my site, that's the guy that I would choose. And that is one of my more expensive studs. Now, just to mention about how we do this, because we're a bit different than other people. When you use us, you don't pay the whole stud fee. In fact, on any stud that you choose of ours, you pay $1,000 down. $1,000 for the first shipment, and then you pay $200 for every shipment that you get. I like to do two shipments. And then you pay the balance of the stud fee. So the balance gets paid about four months later when you've got your puppies on the ground, you're ready to register the litter. And everything comes with a guarantee, and the guarantee is this. Look, we can't guarantee that you're going to have puppies, but we're going to guarantee that if you don't get puppies, you get retries, and you're not paying us the 1000 bucks again. And if you have a failure, which doesn't happen often, but it does happen, the thousand dollars that you paid us, you can move that forward to any future breeding, any of your girls against any of our boys. We don't want to take money from you and not deliver. So we work very hard at that. Okay, but so that, that was the advertising end of that. We'll get rid of this. Okay. This is going on pretty long. So let's talk about now about some other alternative dogs and what would make sense because that was an expensive, that was an expensive stud that we chose. So now we're going to go with a, the other end of the spectrum. We are just trying to produce dogs um, and we don't want to have a lot of money in a stud fee. And so I'm going to talk about what uh, one of my dogs that I have available, which is almost my least expensive dog, and what would he produce. And his name is Ganache. And Ganache is a chocolate, he's a cocoa dog, he's a cocoa that carries, I'll move my microphone there, carries blue, full tan points, carries cream, no pied. So Ganache is a big D, little d dog. He's a little C-O, little C-O dog. He's big B, big B, doesn't have testable chocolate. He's A-T, A-T, tan points. He is uh, E-M-E, carries a copy of cream. He's K-Y, K-Y. He is N-N, no pied. I don't know about intensity on that dog. He's not moral and he's not fluffy. All right, what would you get? Well, all the dogs are gonna be, you're gonna get um, carriers and blue dogs. And one half will be blue and one half will be carriers. Every single dog will be chocolate. Uh, the dogs will either be that or that. They will not express some of them will be carriers of the testable chocolate, but none of them will express it. They will all be ATAs or ATATs. They will all have tan points. Um, a quarter of the, half of the puppies, or uh, half times a half is a quarter. Uh, I've got to get this right. I didn't get that right over there. I've, I've got to redo that. Uh, a quarter of them are going to be creams. Italy, literally. A quarter will be creams. And by the way, I screwed up on this. I better correct that right now because that math is wrong right here. That's why it gets complicated. If, the, if you do a Punnett square on this combination here, we'll just do a Punnett square real quick. I hope you can see that on the board. A Punnett square of a DD dog with a big D little D dog, you would get, and you would get, and this, and this. So you get one quarter blue. I said a half, I was wrong. You get one quarter blue, little d, little d. You would get one quarter not blue at all. One quarter, they're not blue at all. And then one half would be carriers. So that's what you get there. So I wrote that there wrong. Okay. All right, get that off the board. 
Okay, moving along. They're all no brindles. No dog, neither dog has brindle. Uh, neither dog has pied. We don't know about this right here, so they're probably gonna be I-N-I-N. -I -N. We're not gonna get any morals, and we're not gonna get any fluffies. So there we go. That is, so what's that gonna produce for you? It's gonna produce for you chocolates, um, chocolates, chocolate fawns, chocolates, chocolate tans, chocolate and tans, um, blue, Lilacs. When they get when we get this here, you'll get lilac and tans, um, and um, yeah, that's it. So that's a good litter. It doesn't have the variation of the other litter, and it doesn't have the value of the other litter. But if you're just going to sell all these, and you're not worried about really too much about DNA, and you're trying to get the most color out of it, and you like chocolate dogs, that's what I would use. That's ganache. Okay, so there we go. If you want more information on our dogs, you can go to my, you can go to www.lovemypups.com. So that's lovemypups.com. And we're here to help you. Look, if you've got questions about breeding dogs, about, you know, particularly if, you want, if you're interested in our stud service, I think you'll find the phone calls very useful. Look, we're not gonna press you to use our dogs. And there's lots of times that people don't use our dogs and that's absolutely fine, but we are here to help you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some good information out of it. I hope you subscribe to our channel. Brought to you by mybreedersupply.com. We've been in business for over eight years. We manufacture products to help you have successful breedings, successful whelps, and successful puppies. We've introduced a new subscription service, canineconnect.com. It's a one-year subscription for 129 bucks. And for that, you get two-day free shipping on all, all of your orders. You get 5% off your every order that you place and you get direct access to our support line to help you with products that you buy from us and general questions about breeding your dogs. It's really a great deal. I hope you subscribe to that. Now the disclaimer. I'm not a licensed veterinarian. I'm not a professional health giver, but I am a guy that's been breeding dogs successfully for over 20 years. Any information you get from my videos is purely at your own risk. If you have any doubts about any of this stuff, you should definitely seek the help of a licensed professional. Again, thanks for watching. Have fun with your doggies. Bye, buddy. Mm -hmm.